uh, one of our missionaries is in town, and he'll be here this evening. Uh, I believe he's scheduled to preach, uh, Brother Malucci. And uh, so him and his family, I think I saw them pull up in the white van out there. I think they said something like 10 kids. So uh, they'll be the large family here this morning. And uh, I'm sure uh, they'll have him stand or say something. But uh, uh, just be in prayer for that. Also, um, many of you know that uh, David Hetzer will be coming to uh, candidate. There's the word for a uh, pastor of Lighthouse, and so he'll be preaching, I believe, this Thursday and next weekend, and uh, we'll be voting on the 18th, so uh, make sure you're here for that. And uh, also on Saturday, the 10th, uh, there'll be a breakfast down in the fellowship hall with question and answer. If you have a question, maybe you're like, I wanna, I don't know much about him, I'm sure he's gonna get up, give his testimony, his wife. If you have a question, you can email Brother Abe, those questions because I don't know if they'll be taking questions from the audience they're just going off the email in questions or if you want to give them to me and I'll submit them if you're like I don't want my name said um, you can give them to me and I'll submit them and say hey here's some questions that were brought that uh, we have for the incoming potential pastor and uh, I know that God used him uh, encouraged by his messages uh, the last time last couple Sundays ago when he preached but uh, if you didn't get one of these lesson guides slash cooling fans, uh, we have some. And uh, see, God provides in all kinds of ways. Uh, we still have some, and we have some in the back. And uh, also the prayer board, if you have a prayer request, I know Brother Jonathan's telling me he's got a stack of answered prayers. Yeah. Um, uh, go ahead and drop it in the box. Maybe in a week or two we'll uh, do uh, more praise and prayer and kind of, kind of give some updates. And uh, I know there was uh, the nursing the elder care facility. Continue to pray for the situation in there. It's not getting better. And uh, just continue to pray for that. Uh, so turn to Mark chapter 5. And uh, we'll go ahead and pray and get get going here. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. I thank you for all those that you brought out. And Lord, we just thank you for the testimony you allowed us to hear this morning. And Lord, we may not think that our testimony is that important, but it's how you worked in our lives. And Lord, we just thank you for the testimony that you've given each and every one of us and the encouragement that it can give us. And Lord, we just ask that you would help us not be ashamed of where you brought us from and where you're bringing us, but that we could give you the glory through every stage of it. And Lord, we just ask now that you be with this lesson, uh, a lesson on unbelief in the life of Peter. And Lord, I just ask that you would show us something through it and Lord, that you would just have your hand on the services this morning. We ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. So in Mark chapter 5, we've been looking at the life of Peter here. And um, uh, we're going to look at this, like I said a moment ago, a lesson on unbelief. We looked at a beginning, our, uh, a lesson on obedience. And much just like in our Christian lives, when we got saved, we have a beginning. And we answered the call, and we obeyed, and, and we start following God. Now we see that in Peter's life as he begins that um, the Lord's beginning to teach and show him things through us, uh, his walk. We know that the Bible doesn't encompass 100% of what happened. It says that if the volumes were written, the, the, the world, there's so much stuff that happened, he couldn't write it all down. There you go. That's the paraphrased version of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, as we see God working in these situations, uh, hopefully we'll get something from that this morning. So in Mark chapter 5 and verse 22, and uh, we'll go through 24 and then skip to verse 35. And it says, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed. Now this is coming to Jesus here. And she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now verse 35, While he yet spake, there came... From the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Mm -hmm. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come, and he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in with the, dams 
where, where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was at the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them strictly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. So in the last two lessons we've, we saw take place at the Sea of Galilee, in the call of Peter, and we see him launch out the obedience as they said, launch out into the deep and throw down thy nets. And we saw that it was partial obedience. So now as we look into this, we're going to see an instance where he's, Jesus is going to show Peter and the people that are there, even through unbelief, he can still work. And many of us that have had children or have gone through any bit of training, they say what? Repetition is the key to learning? Beat it into their heads, sometimes people say. Or I know that when I was going through training, they like to play a little game on instant obedience called seat feet. And I don't know if you know what that is. It's seat, you drop to and sit on the Indian style, and then feet, you stand right back up. But they go seat feet, seat feet, seat feet. So you never knew where you're at, and they tell you're too slow. They're like gravity only works so fast. But uh, repetition is the key to learning. As we'll see uh, throughout the, the life, the, this three and a half years with Peter, the Lord will use different instances, and you'll show him how he can work through unbelief, work through faith, work through obedience time and time again. So part of becoming a disciple of Christ, we see that there's a beginning, there's the call, there's the obedience, and then that the foundation of becoming a disciple is the trust and obedience that we have to give to the Lord. We may not understand why, and God say, I want you to do this, you be like, I don't know why, but I'm going to obey because God's commanded me to do that. And we never know why it is. You think about the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip, right? He ran, he left a big revival that was taking place to meet someone on their way. He was a pretty good runner if he was keeping up with a chariot, right? But uh, we see that sometimes we may not understand why God has us do something, why he has us go through things in our lives. But later on down the road, we'll see that God will use that situation to say, remember that time you obeyed me and this is what happened? This person is going through that situation and I want you to go encourage them. Share your testimony with them. And one thing that we need to realize is that with God's help, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And so in, in the New Testament, there's three times it says that just shall live by faith. In Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, and Hebrews 10.38. And in 10.38 says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Many times, like we'll see even later on in Peter's life, when he took that step of faith and walked on water, when he started to doubt and got his eyes off of God, off of Jesus, he begins to sink, but Jesus was still there to lift him up. So as we continue to go through this, we have to realize that there's nothing too hard for God. Now, as we look at this situation with the, the young young lady, the 12-year-old lady, a uh, girl that dies or dies here or asleep, it, we see that uh, God raises her from the dead. And uh, how God does that, we'll look at. So the first thing we're going to look at is the sad situation that we see in verses 22 to 23. And we saw this when he, the ruler of the synagogue came and uh, besought Jesus and fell at his feet and said, My daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And we know that in the Garden of Eden, when sin entered, paradise left. That when sin comes, when uh, sin enters in the world, so did death. And so one of the hardest things, and I know for me as a parent, having to think about one of my children dying, and when the, children, when the kids were little, and I remember just surrendering to the Lord, his will be done with whatever the situation, but no parent wants to see their child die. The, kid, the, parents are, or the kids are supposed to outlive the parents, right? That's how we like to think of it. We don't want to see that. And uh, so when something happens to a child, it grips our hearts and it, the pain is, it may, it may seem a little deeper. And we know that he was the ruler of this son of the God, so no doubt he'd already sought the, the doctors and the medicine and everything else. And it came to the point he realized, the only thing that's going to save my daughter is the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go and fall at the Lord's feet and pray and ask him to heal, him, heal her. So in verse 23, we see the father's plea. It says, in the end of 20, verse 22, it says, And he fell at her feet and besought him greatly. 
So we may look at someone and say, you know what, this person has it all. They got wealth, they got position, they have access to the best doctors and the best care. But sometimes there's things that are out of man's hands and you have to give it straight to God. And it says, seek him first in the different situations. Seek him early while he may be found. And there would be times in our lives that we may say, you know what, I know I can go to the doctor for this. I know that I can, I, I can try to figure this out. But do we take it to the Lord? And he's going to put those people in our lives, give the doctors wisdom, give them the understanding of how things work, to give us the, what we need. But he may also say, I want you to trust me in this and, and watch how I deliver you. So here Peter is watching this man of prestige, a position, a, I guess you could say a ruler within their community, a religious leader. And he comes and humbly falls at the Lord's feet and petitions, begs him to come and heal his daughter. Now how would you feel if your child or your loved one was at the point of death, would you go up to someone's like, hey, if you got a minute, or would you be like interrupting a conversation, shoving people out of the way and say, you know what, I need to talk to God on this one. I want him to come. I want him to hear my plea, to hear my, peti my petition. In James chapter 5 and verse 16, it says, confess thy faults one to another, and pray one, one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we can see that all throughout the Bible where Elijah, who prayed earnestly that the, the heavens would be closed up, that it wouldn't rain. And we see that for a period of time, it doesn't. And then we see how he goes before the Lord and asks for it to rain. And then a, the rain comes. Do we go to the Lord and say, God, if you got a moment, or hey, if sometime in the next 10 years, could you see, maybe help me with this? Or are you in a, a point when you're like, God, I need your answer. I need your help right now. And you're going to fall down and say, God, I don't care who sees me. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to beg at your feet for this. Because no doubt people looked up to him. This religious leader is falling at this man's feet. Why is he falling at his feet? He's supposed to be the one that we're looking to for instruction. But are we willing to step out of our comfort zone to look at and say, I don't care what's going on. I know that I need the Lord on this. I don't care who knows. I don't care where I'm at. And I've heard testimonies of people that were visiting someone at a hospital. I think it was, I want to say Charlie Clark, but I could be wrong. Where he was talking about when he visited someone and they got saved. He's like, God, if this guy gets saved, I'll give a big praise God. And he's walking. He's like, oh, there's people in the hallway. So I'll do it in the elevator. He's about to close. And then walks a bunch of ladies. And he's, God's like, what about that praise? And he said, I don't know, have you ever heard the, chat, the term Bapticostal fit? <laughs> so they said they got to praise him in the elevator when they found out what happened so you never know what God will use to encourage someone else uh, in that situation and when we go to the Lord are we going to go just uh, maybe I'll go at 11 o'clock like when you watch the news it says breaking news tune, tune in at 11 like, well, if it's breaking why do I have to tune in in 6 hours <laughs> but uh, are we going to say do you know what God I'm going to you right now and this the very moment. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17 it says, Pray without ceasing. Psalms 34.15 The eyes of the Lord upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. Psalms 145.18 The Lord is nigh to all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. All throughout scripture we can see fervent petition. You think of, uh, was it Hannah that fell down and the priest thought she was drunk? Because she was going with such anguish, such, with such fervency to the Lord in prayer. And how many times do we see or hear of someone be like, you know what, I really don't feel like doing it right now because people will see me. I don't want to go down to the altar. It may be God's dealing with you on something completely different. You're like, that message, I don't want people to think that I'm struggling with that or doing whatever. Or like, what will people think of me if I do this? Or am I going to obey God and say, you know what, I'm going to do what you called me to do and I don't care what people say because... We shouldn't follow after man, right? We should follow after God. And if we seek and we want man's approval, we'll do things that get garner man's approval. It may not be what God wants us to do. 
Uh, we can see different instances, maybe with uh, the parable of the woman with the unjust judge. Um, we can see Jesus going before his crucifixion in, in the garden, praying, not my will, but thine be done. And there'll be times we ask God, please remove this, like Paul, remove this thorn from my flesh. And God may say, do you know what? I want this thorn in your flesh for a reason, so that you'll stay close to me, so that you'll continue to grow. But in the life of Peter, God was, uh, Jesus was teaching him to continue to have faith, to keep moving forward. And sometimes we may not get the answer that we're looking for, but it doesn't mean God didn't hear us. He just may say, I have something else in store for you, a different direction I want you to take. Like Trina said, she didn't want her husband to die. Yeah. But God used it to get the gospel out to 65 different politicians and leaders in the community that may otherwise never have sat there and listened to the gospel go out. Or just to allow her to continue to grow in the Lord and bring her to where she needs to be. But as we see, as, as Jesus is traveling with the, the few disciples here, that something's going to come up and slow them down a little bit. So sometimes our timeline isn't God's timeline. We can see throughout different instances in the Bible where someone's pleaded for Jesus to come, someone's near death, think of Lazarus, and what does he do? Something happens and he slows down. He stops to deal with another situation, and they both perish. But we also see that Jesus, he's not, death does not stop him from working. He created life, and he can restore life. And as we see with this, this young, the daughter here, in verse 23, we see that there was a plight, a situation that was there. And it says, and he besought him greatly, saying, My little, little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Jairus had hope. He, he went to the Lord saying, Jesus, I know that you can restore her. I know I've heard of what you've done. I believe that you can. And uh, just like the, the, I believe it was this, uh, the centurion, where he said, Lord, you can say the word and they be restored. And the, many times... We have to just take God at his word in the situation. If he says, this is where I want you to go, this is what I want you to do, this is the direction. And we may not understand or may not be our desire, but God will reward us and count us faithful for that. So as we see as he's traveling, that a group of people, it says, and, and that he was thronged, he was slowed down, he was caught in a large group of people, and this is where the woman with the issue of the blood reached out and touched the hem of his gar garment. And he stopped and said, who touched me, right? Because he sensed some virtue went out from him. And we see that she says, she also had a situation where the doctors couldn't help. And we see how God used that situation in her, in her, her faith in her life to heal her. But it was at this point that we see the messenger comes from Jairus' household saying, thy daughter is dead, why troublest the master any further? So sometimes we're like, God, the situation's already passed, the deadline's over, I can't do it, I can't make that bill, I can't make that situation. Lord, it's not possible anymore. And God says, just have faith, keep moving forward, and watch what I'll do. And we see that he continues on to, to Jarius's house, and we know that he was expecting his daughter's death and said she was, it was a point unto death and we see that now the, the word comes that hey your daughter has died and we see that uh, Jesus doesn't stop he hears what they say and he doesn't discourage them saying oh I guess I'll go this direction now it's hopeless time spent God says no Jesus said be not afraid only believe and many times we just have to take God at his word and when he says he'll do something he'll do it God's never once failed on a promise that he's made. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Psalms 27, 14, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So maybe you're in a situation you think, I don't see how God's going to work this out. I don't see the direction that this is going. 
that it's going to be a beneficial one. And many times we'll come into those situations and it's there. We have to take it to the Lord and leave it with them. Many times you hear this, the, the, the saying, just take it and leave it at the cross. Give the situation to the Lord. Because worrying about it, fretting over it, it's not going to do you any good except for make you tired in the morning. But when you take and say, God, I'm going to lay this at your feet. And I believe that you can take care of it. And if you don't, then so be it. I'm going to continue to praise you. I'm going to continue to serve you no matter the situation. You think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Jonathan and his armor bearer. They're going to continue to follow God no matter what the outcome is. system goes through the speakers so it's probably the school bell and someone plugs something new into it but uh back from our regular schedule disruption but uh <laughs> like the far alarm panels in this room what's going on so but uh we'll have to edit that one out of the video <laughs> So we see that we can cast our cares upon the Lord, no matter the situation, how we see it. We may not see how God's going to work it out. I know there's been times in my life and in my family's life where we've come up and be like, God, you want us to be here, and you're going to have to provide. You're going to have to make the means to do it. And Lord, if we have to, we'll do this and this, but I know this is where you have us, and you promise that if we're faithful and we do what you say, that you'll provide. And we've seen how just out of the blue, when my wife and I were first married and struggling financially, we get a check in the mail from a family member and say, hey, God wanted me to give this to you. Put it on my heart to give you this amount of money. And that's why if someone, if God puts it on your heart, and I know years ago, God put it on my heart to give someone some money, and I was like, but, but that's my money. <laughs> right? Ever get in that situation? And God's like, no, I want you to give it to that person to take care of this situation. You may not know what they're going through, and God say, I want you to give them something a little extra to help them. And uh, just to hear a blessing. And sometimes you may never know what it was they're struggling through. You think about Job. God never told him why he went through that, the trials in his life. But we see that he was richly blessed in the end. And when we're faithful, we can see how we can take our burdens to the Lord. And there's hymns, Leave It at the Cross. Uh, the hymn, Leave It There. And I'm not going to sing it to you because I want you to come back next week. <laughs> but uh, there's different times that God's used hymns. Before and at the end of class, we try to play some some different music, some relaxing, maybe not the words. And when I was in the military, I would play my MP3 disc in the shop radio of just hymns, just instrumental. And then no one ever said anything because one person said, why do you play hymns in here? I was like, well, if they know what it is, they shouldn't be offended. And if they don't know, it just sounds like good music. <laughs> but uh, yeah. How many times have you gone through a situation God used a, a, a song to encourage you? I know years ago I was a little, a little bit of a depression and going through some things, and just a, a song came on that God just used to encourage me. And sometimes when you just stop and say, you know what, I'm going to listen to some, some good music and encourage yourself in the Lord, and those things that you were thinking, they kind of, they kind of disappear, and you start thinking, I'm going to sing this song, I'm going to make a joyful noise on the Lord, because... Mine is hopefully a joyful noise. Most of the time, growing up, my sister was like, no, you need to stop. Don't even sing in the shower. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'm that good. So uh, just have a hymnal. Have that song. Or even it's just instrumental music playing in the background. When you get discouraged, um, most people have the Alexas and the different things. And you can get music so much easier now. I remember when it was just... CDs and you like it's the same CD over and over. And you have like the five disc changer and you put it on random. And then my kids are like, I don't know what that means, Dad. <laughs> but uh, they don't even know what MP3 because everything's streaming now. Well, they probably do. But just have that encouragement. Sometimes on the way home from work, I'll just have mute instrument music playing, or something. Sometimes nothing at all. I'll just be going to the Lord in prayer, asking Him for help in a situation. 
But as we look at the life of Peter, we see him go through all this. And the next thing we'll look at is the scornful spectators. And uh, we'll probably not get all the way through this lesson this morning. Um, uh, so we'll pick it up next week. But the scornful, those that were there, and they see Jesus coming, they're like, she's already died. Why are you still coming? And uh, we see um, in verse 40, it says, And they laughed in the scorn when he talked about she, but she, when she was just sleeping. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother, the damsel, and them that were with him. So those were the, the disciples that had come with Jesus for this part. And entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And we see that she gets up and he commands that she be given something to eat. So as those people were there, we see that they were scorning, they were mocking. They were making fun of them, like, we know when someone's dead. No breath, no heartbeat. There's, there's no life left in her. And it could have been hours, it could have been days. I don't think it gives us a time frame. But we see throughout the, the different accounts of the Gospels that they're, they, they, they were scornful. They scorned the Lord uh, when he said she would sleep it. And sometimes when we face those situations that people say, you know what, it's already passed. God can't help you anymore. That situation's no longer at the point where um, you can get remedy for it. But we see that the Lord said, hey, nothing is impossible. Death doesn't even stop me. And then uh, we see that the, the next one in A is the, the Lord's assertion. And uh, we see that they go in and he commands uh, where, where the, the, the damsel was. And uh, we see it in the Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the difference where they laughed at him, the scorning that he received. But much like I said earlier, how many times we get in a situation where we say, you know what, I don't want to go to the Lord in front of people. I don't want to let someone know about this situation in my life. Because maybe it's like it's a little embarrassing that I'm struggling with this or that this situation's there. I'll just handle it on my own. But when we tell someone else, maybe it's just their, I'll pray for you. Or even just when we do prayer requests, I have an unspoken. Would you just pray for that unspoken? Now, I've seen people, and I had a friend that would do this, be like, would you pray for my unspoken? Be like, what is it? And then they'd say it. <laughs> so sometimes uh, you just need to pray for someone. And you may not know what they're going through. And I've talked with people that are going through situations, and they may not say it, but when you're talking, you ever see someone talking about something, you see the hurt in their eye, and you can just see that they're struggling with something, that something's bothering them? And I was talking with someone a couple months ago, and I could see something in their eye. And I was thinking, you know what, I'm going to pray for that. I don't know what that situation is, how they were hurt, but I'm going to pray for them in that. And, um, and just let the Lord work it out. We also see that when God says that he's going to do it, he will, he's faithful to perform all that he's, he says. In John 17, oh, my battery's dying there. But in John 17... <laughs> 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is true. Uh, Psalms 19, 7 through 9, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord true and righteous altogether. Psalms 119, 151, Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. We can see God fulfilling his word when he commanded Elijah to go to the widow woman and ask her, say, telling him that I've prepared a woman to pro that will provide for you during the famine. And he goes, and we see that as uh, he's there, uh, that the Lord uses the, the widow woman with the two sticks and just a little bit of meal and how God sustains them through the famine with that. And we can see hold God at his word and know that he is faithful and just to uh, do all that he says. And so as we go into this next week, and we'll pick this up next week uh, at the, the people's derision, but uh, just think, is there a situation in my life that I think is impossible, that I can't see a way out of? I can't see how God's going to use this and say, God, I don't know how you're going to meet this need, 
or how I'm going to get through this, but I'm trusting that I'm where you want me, what you've called me to do, and doing what it is you want me to do, and I'm going to trust that you're going to provide. But if not, I'm still going to rejoice no matter what and continue to follow and serve you. So as we go out this morning, just think of Peter in this situation, and uh, we'll pick up and continue on with how through unbelief we can see the Lord working. And sometimes it's the unbelief of others, and sometimes it's our own unbelief, but God says, I will still meet that need uh, through this. So we'll go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. Lord, I thank you for the testimony that we heard, and Lord, uh, just the encouragement that it was to me. And Lord, that you would just continue to work in all of our lives. Help us to be faithful to what you've called us to, and to do what it is that you have us to do. I ask that you be with the teaching and preaching and the services to follow, and that you just put a hedge protection about the church and the property and, and your work all throughout the world. And Lord, we just ask that we continue to see you work in a mighty way in our lives. And Lord, we just uh, pray that you'd help us to return safely next week and keep us uh, safe and through the heat. We ask this all in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen.